Okay, so starting out our new unit, we're going to be looking at a lot of geometry now as we get into the trig function. So let's start out with some of our basic concepts in geometry. And a lot of them are similar to our concepts in arithmetic. So to start out with geometry, we're going to start out with the simplest possible item. We discussed this last semester when we started doing areas and volumes. But that is a point. And a point is just a location. If I take that point and I move it in a single direction, the distance I move is equal to the length of a line segment that is created. Now if I take that point and I continue in that same direction. I have created a second line segment here. The total length of that line segment is just equal to the sum of the smaller ones. Now that seems really silly to say, but it is only true if these three points here are what we call collinear. Collinear means collinear. How about collinear? Collinear just means they're on the same line. If there's any bend to them at all, even a slight bend like that, the distance from this point to the last point will no longer be this distance plus this distance anymore because they're not in a straight line. Does that make sense? This distance now can go a shorter way over here. Um, the whole length, by the way, has to be larger than either of the two pieces. Again, that seems like common sense, but as we get into triangles and piecing stuff together, uh, we're going to see that Sometimes if you don't if you don't look at that you can get yourself into some trouble. If I have a line or a line segment, either one, and a point that is not on that line, the distance from that point to the line is measured at a right angle. The term that is used is called perpendicular. So perpendicular means forming right angles. And it's actually more, more stronger than that. Uh, more stronger. It is stronger than that. It is forming a right angle in every possible measurable direction. So two lines on a paper being perpendicular, that just basically means they form a right angle. But a line, let's say a line coming out of the surface of that board, to be perpendicular to the board, it means in every direction you measure the angle, it's still a right angle. So that's what perpendicular means. From that point to that line, there is only one line segment that will be perpendicular. There's no other, possible way we, no other possible place we can draw that in. It's only one spot. There's only one, in other words, there's only one spot on this line that is closest to that point. Also, since we're talking about perpendicular, just we'll talk about parallel through that point, there will only be one line that is parallel to the original line or line segment. What is the definition of parallel? Okay, that is one of the one definitions is two lines that never intersect or never touch. That is only true in two dimensions. On a flat piece of paper, if two lines never intersect, then they will be parallel. But if we're out in three dimensional space here, here's a line and here's a line. Do they intersect? No. No. Are they parallel? No. No, they are not. So in three dimensions, we have to make that definition a little stronger. Um, same slope, slope is hard to define in three dimensions, but that's a good idea. In two dimensions, yes, same slope does mean they're parallel. Always the same distance apart.
So you can define parallel planes with that same concept. The two planes, like think of two flat pieces of paper, are always the same distance apart, they're parallel. The technical term, the terminology is everywhere equidistant. But in other words, always the same distance apart. So some, some labeling here. If I call this point here P, this point A, this point B, I'll put another point out here, C. And this point here we're going to call D. Some terminology here. So we've got points A, B, C, D, and P here. What is that label telling me? Yeah, we have line segment or segment AB. Line PC, that's a line because it got the arrows on the end of it. Of course, I could have named this BA or CP, right? What if there's another point out here, point F? Well, that very same line could be called line FP, could be called line FC, PF, CF, any one of those names could fit into it. So if there's a line like that, I can pick any two points on that line and name it. For this line segment, could I call that segment DB? No. A line segment has endpoints. A line segment must be named by its endpoints. If I said line segment DB, that's implying only this piece of it. PD is a segment, right? What's that symbol mean? Perpendicular to segment AB. FC is related to AB how? Parallel. That symbol means parallel. And now, of course, the one that we haven't talked about yet is this one. What's that called? Ray. Array. This ray could be called. Oops, I don't know why I wrote that long. Ray M N, or it could be called ray M O. Could it be called ray NM? No, we always have to start with the end point and go towards the arrow. Could it be NO? No, because it has to start with the end point. So the only one that we can, the second point can be any other point on the ray, but the first point must be that end point, that beginning point of the ray. Relationships that we have seen before. If this angle here is 32 degrees, what's that angle there have to be? Well, 148 degrees. Because those two angles make a straight line. That means they have to add up to 180 degrees. The special name we have for that is Supplementary. What's this angle here have to be? 32 degrees. It could be 180 minus the 148. Those two are also supplementary. There is a special name, however, for these two angles. Those two are what we would call vertical angles. Vertical angles are defined in a couple of ways. They are created by intersecting lines. And they are, of course, the 
opposite, opposing angles. Now there's a second set of vertical angles here. Of course, this angle would be 148 is that well. So those two would also be vertical angles. So vertical angles can be defined in one of two ways. Like I said, they can be the opposite corners of intersecting lines, or they are supplementary to the same angle. They're both sub the 32 degree angles are both supplementary to this 48 degree, 148 degree angle. So they have to be equal. This angle here, let's say, is 21 degrees. This one here, let's say, is 28 degrees. What would this angle here be? 49 degrees. These two angles, the 28 and the 21, are what we call adjacent angles. Adjacent angles, just like lengths of segments, are additive. Adjacent angles must share the same vertex, so they're that same point, and then one common side. They have that side in common. If that's the case, I can find the larger angle by just adding the two smaller ones together. Just like up above, I could find the longer segment by adding the two smaller segments together. Supplementary angles are often adjacent, but they don't have to be. Um, usually they're formed by a straight line. You know they're supplementary because they're both on the same straight line, um, but they can be supplementary outside of that. And we'll look at those as the rest of the semester goes on. What's that little symbol mean? Right angle. It means they're perpendicular or right angle. If I put that in there and I tell you that that is 31 degrees, what's this angle here got to be? Ninety minus 31, which is 59 degrees. Two angles that add up to a right angle are called complementary. Now, if you're anything like I was when I was first learning these years ago, I had the supplementary and complementary, and I had a hard time remembering. I remember the two words, but I had a hard time remembering which one's which. Do you get compliments when you're wrong? No, you get compliments when you're right. Compliments add up to a right angle. The next ones here are going to be called Tate angles. Well, we could have we could have lines that are parallel. We could have lines that are perpendicular. We could have lines that intersect at angles that are just not right. Technically, these are called oblique. But I won't tate up. I won't tate up for the afternoon, at least. <laughs> I look on the bright side. Your name's going to be recorded and posted on YouTube for the whole world to see now. Yeah. So you've got more than enough evidence in your lawsuit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the oh, oblique lines or oblique angles are lines that are not parallel or perpendicular or angles that are not right angles. The reason this is important is we're going to start out in trig talking about something called right triangles. Those are triangles that have right angles in them. But we're going to move on to those oblique triangles, which are triangles that have no right angles in them. Most people have the mistaken impression that trig only applies to right triangles. We will dispel that mistaken impression before the semester is over.
So let's talk a little bit more about these angles that we have. Um, we've looked at adjacent angles, um, vertical angles, complementary and supplementary angles. Um, we want to look at angles in between. How is the measurement of an angle determined? Well, once upon a time, when navigation was a much more popular skill, you had your navigational arrows, which basically your directions, you know, your east, north, west, south. Your east direction for navigation was defined to be zero degrees. Now, there are several different versions of navigation. Um, for some, if you're in, this is just navigation, the map navigation. If you are in an airplane and traveling, straight forward is zero degrees. But if you're just looking at plotting a path, east is zero degrees. And moving around, of course, north would be 90 degrees, west would be 180, south would be 270, and 360 degrees would be back here at east again at zero degrees. So if we have a, a ray, I should say, a ray is set up so that the center of this coordinate is that beginning point of the ray. And then the, the point is moved in a direction. Well, the direction that that point is moved in to form the ray, form the ray, has a direction on the map. Let's say that is 22 degrees. Well, let's say that we form another ray. So we go back to that same starting point. We have to have the same vertex and move in a different direction. And let's say the direction that this ray is moved in is defined as the 71 degree direction. The angle formed by those two rays, the size of that angle is defined to be difference in direction. So 71 minus 22 is 49 degrees. Does that make sense? So that is that angle, is the difference in the direction between the two rays that form its side. Now as time has gone on, people have become less and less familiar with navigation. Less and less familiar, actually this is the same, uh, the grid that is used for surveying and stuff like that as well. But it's become less familiar, so what we have done is we have shortened it up. Let's say you start in one direction and you make a complete turn around and back in that same direction. How many degrees is that? 360 degrees. Let's say you start in one direction and you complete turn around and are heading in the opposite direction. How many degrees is that? 180. Well, how'd you get 180? Just half of 360. Hold that thought. If we turn, make a square corner, how many degrees is that? 90. How'd you get 90 degrees? Half of 180 or one fourth of 360. So the modern definition, the newer definition of an angle is just it's a fraction of a full turn. 100, a 360 degrees is a full turn. Half of that is 180. Quarter of that is 90. And then other degrees in between are their fraction of a turn. So if I construct an angle that's 49 degrees, what that is saying is that this angle is 49 360ths of a full turn. Make sense? All right. Well, we are used to measuring angles in degrees, but what if we need to be somewhat more precise than that? What if we have an angle here that is measured at 17.8? Four degrees. This notation that I just put up here is called decimal degrees. With calculators and stuff, that's the most common way of expressing those angles. But there's another way of expressing those angles. This 17 degree, 17.84 degrees could be expressed in a notation where we actually have, there are other units smaller than a degree. One degree is actually equal to 60 minutes. 
Now the symbol for minute is a single quote. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. The abbreviation for second is a double quote. So you do have to be careful here. If I have something like, well, let's do the conversion here. Seventeen degrees, fifty minutes, twenty-four seconds. Do not read that seventeen degrees, fifty feet, twenty-four inches. Now that was twenty-four inches, which kind of gives that away. But I mean, if you have a really small angle, it's like. Three degree or three minutes nine seconds. First of all, it's a really tiny angle, by the way. Um, be careful because I can very easily read three feet nine inches. Typically, if it was that, it would be three zero nine is the way it would be. So it's a little bit easier to distinguish. Um, realistically, I have never worked with a company. Uh, most measurement is done down to like the nearest 15 or 10. Um, the most precise I've ever seen angles measured in practice is down to five minutes. So one twelfth of a degree. Um, if you use an optical comparator, what an optical comparator is, is actually it's a, a very, very finely done light that you put the piece down on this screen that's got light behind it and that projects it up onto another screen so it blows everything up. And it blows everything up exactly in proportion. So then you can measure on that screen and you can get very, very precise measurements of really small things because it blows them up so you can get a bigger measurement of them. The smaller something is, the harder it is to get a precise measurement of it because you know, we talked about errors in measurement last semester. The smaller the object is, well, then a, a really small, really tiny error in the measurement is actually a big percentage of the whole measurement. So you've got to be much more precise on those small measurements. For this class, we're not going to do any measurement down smaller than like a 15 minute angle. In fact, we're not even going to look at using like a bevel protractor or anything like that. For you guys, you're not going to need to be that precise really. Um, in furniture even, they go down to a degree. They don't go down to a, you know, the 10 minutes or 15, 15 minutes. If you guys were in machining uh, metals, then we would look more at that, that type of thing. But we do want to look at converting here. We had that 17.84 degrees. That is in decimal degrees. By the way, the abbreviation for decimal degrees, DD stands for decimal degrees. We can express it as degrees, minutes, and seconds, the abbreviation for which is DMS. So how do we make that conversion? Well, this is just like converting our feet, inches, and sixteenths, only the numbers are different. 17 degrees is still 17 degrees. We take our 0.84. Degrees, we've got to convert it into minutes. So we're going to put it over one. There are 60 minutes in one degree. So 0.84 times 60 should be 50.4. That's 50.4 minutes. What do we do with that? We got the 50. 50 minutes. We've still got the 0.4. Put it over one, there's 60 seconds in one minute. The minutes cancel out, that is 24 minutes. That is 17 degrees, 50, or 24 seconds, I should say. 17 degrees, 50 minutes, 24 seconds. What do you think? Let's do a couple more and then we'll have you try some. So 43.215 degrees. Tell me what to do. 
43 is our degrees, okay. Okay, so time 60. Twelve point nine. Okay, then what? Okay, the twelve is our minutes. Then point nine. Fifty-four seconds. So I'm gonna have you guys convert a couple for me here, quick. Twenty-seven point nine one degrees. 46.3842 degrees. Convert those into degrees, minutes, and seconds for me. There you go. So this is 27 degrees. 0.91 times 60 is what? 60, 54.6. So it's 54 minutes. Then 0.6 times 60 is 36 seconds. 46.3842 degrees is 46 degrees. 0.3842 times 60. 23 minutes. Subtract the 23. Times 60 again. 3.12. Why did I just do 3.1? We generally only put one decimal place in our, minute, in our seconds. Yeah, just one in the seconds. Yes, that'd be three point two then. Yeah, that's just kind of accepted standard. I have never seen anybody that's had to do an angle down to that precision, but yeah, mathematically, that's where we drop it. <laughs> what if we want to go the other direction? What if I have thirty-five? Degrees, 19 minutes, 42 seconds. Got to work bass backwards, yes. 42 divided by 60 is 0.7. Add the 19. Divide by 60 is 0.3. 3.28. Add the 35. 5.328 degrees. Oh my gosh. So let's do this on the calculator once. 41 degrees, 29 minutes, 36 seconds. So what I'm going to do on the calculator, I'm going to start with the 36. I'm going to do what? Divide by 60. Then I'm going to add the 29. Then I'm going to do what? Divide by 60. Then I'm going to add... 41. So 41.4933333. 41 Here, while I finish up writing this, you gotta have some time to try it again. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> Usually for decimal degrees, you round it up to three or four decimal places. 
on the, the book, I think, tells you five decimal places on some problems. So go off that. If it's on a quiz, I would say usually four decimal places would be adequate. Well, let's have you guys try a couple on your own. So 28 degrees, 48 minutes, 12 seconds. And let's have you do 37 degrees, 54 minutes, 18 seconds. Try those in your notes. So 28 point eight zero three three degrees. Yes, no. Something's a little off there. So start with the 12 divided by 60. Hit equals in between each step. Add the 48. Got to hit equals there. Plus the or divide by 60 again. And then, of course, add the 28. Yeah, Order of operations is going to divide before it adds. But you want to add the 48 before you divide by 60. So you did 48 divided by 60. So it's going to add 0.6 to it. Over here, what, 37.905. The degrees, the whole degree should always be the same. So if that's 37 degrees, it should never be more than 37 degrees. It should be 37 point something. 28 degrees is about to be 28 point something. Okay. This should all be in the decimals. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to show you a magic little button on your calculator. Yeah, wait, what magic button? Let's see what you guys all got. Okay. The instructions I'm about to give you are going to be for Jake's calculator. Yep. Yeah. TI-30. Yeah, but yours works way different. You've got a key on there that looks something like that? Yeah. That is your angle key. So what you can do is you can do this. Enter. Let's do this one over here because this one works out nice and pretty. Enter 37.905. Press equals or enter. And now I press that key. Now you arrow all the way over because I'm guessing you're seeing a degree, a minute, a second, yep. an R, maybe a P, and G. Arrow all the way over. Off the edge of the screen. Okay. You see a DMS. Select that. Hit enter again. You should see 30, 37 degrees, 54 minutes, 18 seconds. Yeah. Now, let's say you wanted to enter the 37 degrees, 54 minutes, 18 seconds. You would enter 37, press that key, select the degree symbol, type in the 54, press that key, arrow over, and select the minute symbol. 18, press the key, select the... Hit equals and it'll automatically change it all to D yeah. decimal degrees. I also have you have you have the DMS to DD and DD to DMS. Yes. Yours will do DD to DMS really well. Do you know how to do DMS to DD? Do you know how to enter an angle in degrees, minutes, and seconds? No, I do not. Okay. On your calculator, to enter it, you would have to do thirty-seven 
0.5418. And then hit second, and then there's a DMS to DD key down there. Yep. Hit that. That'll convert it to the 37.95. So the only way to do uh, enter it in DMS is to immediately convert it to decimal degrees. So that tells you, that's telling your calculators that that was DMS, and we're changing it to decimal degrees. On your calculator, Tate, um, you have the Casio tape. Yeah. Okay, on yours, it's a little bit different. You have an angle key like that. Yeah. You would do 37, press that key. Yeah. 54, press that key again. Oh now what it's going to do, it's going to display it with a degree symbol on it. Yeah. Yeah. Then 18, press that key again. Hit equals, it'll change it to 37.905. To enter it as 37.905 and go the other way, enter 37.905. Hit equals. Then just press that key. Should tap, change it to 37. On the graphing calculator, you have the, the uh, I believe there's an angle menu. It should be above the math key, I believe. Come to a peak. So that should take make the oh that's, computer shocked the heck out of me. Should make the next part of this a little bit simpler. To add these, now I'm gonna do it by hand here. Now that you guys know your keys, I'm going to let you guys play with it to figure out how your keys work on your calculator. But it's really not that hard to do it by hand. 42 plus 37 is 79 minutes or 79 seconds. Well, how many seconds does it take to make a minute? 60. So I take out 60 seconds. That's one minute. If I take out 60, it leaves me with 19 seconds. So I've got 19 seconds. I carry my one minute. 29 and 1 is 30, plus 51 is 81. Again, it only takes. 60 of those to make a degree, so we take out that one, how many are left? 21 minutes are left. 1 and 32 is 33, plus 19 is 52 degrees. Not terrible, right? Let's say we have 48 degrees, 39 minutes, 11 seconds, minus 21 degrees, 41 minutes, 52 seconds. Just like any other number, we got to borrow. So we're going to borrow from the 39. This is going to be 38. What's this going to become? 71, because what we borrowed was 60. 71 minus 52 is 19 seconds. Now again, we got to borrow. This will become 47. This is going to become 98, because we borrowed a 60 again. 98 minus 41 is 57 minutes. 47 minus 21 is 26 degrees. How do you feel so far? Let's do 23 degrees, 31 minutes, 18 seconds times 7. So we got that one angle, we're going to need seven of them. So how many total is it going to be? So 18 times seven is 126, right? Yes? Now, unfortunately, that's more than 60. It's also more than 120, so we can take out two minutes, which will leave us with six seconds. Does everybody see where I got the two and the six? Yeah. 60 times 2 is 120. That's why I took out 2. And I took out 120 here to leave me with 6. I took 120 to make that 2. So now 7 times 31 is 217. Plus 2 is 219. 60 goes into there 3 times. 3 times 60 is 180. Give me 39. 7 times 23 is 161. 
plus three is 164. That one's a little cloudier, isn't it? Mm, a little bit. Let's do one more. Forty-three degrees, fifty-one minutes, and forty-two seconds times three. What's three times forty-two? One hundred twenty-six. How many times does sixty come out of there? Twice with how much left over? Six. So three times fifty-one. Plus the two, 155. How many times does 60 come out of there? Twice. With how many left over? 35. 60 times two is 120. So 155 minus 120 is 135. Or is 35 left over? A little confused, Tate. Good. Three times 43 is. 129 plus 2, 131. So 131 degrees, 35 minutes, 6 seconds. Again, a lot of times I'll put a 0 in front of that 6 to solidify the notation. Some of your calculators put that 0 in, some don't. Now, if you were going to enter this in your calculator, by the way, especially Richard, you must do 131.3506. And then you're going to hit that DD to D, or DMS to DD to convert it to decimal degrees. Division. Fourteen degrees, twenty-seven minutes, thirty-six seconds. Divided by four. How many times does four go into fourteen? Three times. It's three degrees. What's three degrees times four? Twelve degrees. How many degrees are left over? Two degrees. Now this is when we did those operations with measurements. This is why I had you do it out the long way because with angles, this would be a real bear to convert this all into seconds because you'd be dealing with literally like thousands, you know, tens of thousands of seconds. Mm -hmm. But before I bring down the 27, what do I have to do to the two? Converted into minutes, I should say. So it's 120 minutes. 27 plus 120 is 147 minutes. 147 divided by 4. 36. 36 times 4 is 144, right? So that is 3 minutes. Before I bring down the 36, what must I do? Three minutes times 60 is 180 seconds. Plus 36 is 216 seconds. 216 divided by 4 is 54. Now, I want you guys on your calculators right now, enter that in your calculator. 14 degrees, 27 minutes, 36 seconds. Hit divide by four. Convert it into degrees, minutes, and seconds. Did you get three thirty six fifty four? Good deal. I think you guys are ready to try some on your own. Page 455 is problems 3, 4, and 5. This is in the unit exercises. This is basically just looking, making sure you know the vocabulary and stuff, so there's not a whole lot to even write down as you do these. But then on page 461, 
which says 20-4, 1 through 35 the odd. On page 464, which says 20-5A, 1 through 35 the odds. And on page 467 through 468, exercise 20-5B, 1 through 33 the odds. I want you to take a good 15 minutes to start working on these. You do have 25 minutes left. You're welcome to stick around and work for the full 25, but I want you to get at least a good start on these before you take off. Um, just to make sure you've got the vocabulary down and the stuff down with the angles and stuff.